This time on Street Rank Garage, we're back at the Indianapolis Police Impound Lot. Are there still vehicles that you can buy for under $1,000 that run and drive? Let's find out. Well, in today's market, it is very difficult to find an actual running, driving, dependable vehicle for under $1,000 nowadays. It's just really hard. Back in the day, you could get one for three, four, five hundred dollars no problem and drive it all day, every day. But with today's inflation, it is getting more and more difficult to get a hold of that elusive, dependable, underpriced vehicle. So we're here today at the auction to see what can we buy for one thousand dollars or less. Now I'm going to try my best to find vehicles that are already running and are marked so on the windshield but for those who are adventurous there are a few here that have been brought in that aren't running that i believe could be made to run in short order take for instance this garbage clown right here it is a 2002 chevy uh 4x4 with only 170 uh 6, miles on it now the uh thing about this truck is it has the Vortec LS engine in it, 5.3 liter, which run forever. Now, if we inspect this vehicle, we can see, obviously, it was in an accident. And that is probably the reason it was impounded to this lot. It got in an accident. The owners sent it to the, uh, the impound lot. Probably didn't have any insurance and, um, well, here it sits. Now, as it says here on the windshield, it has power but will not crank. That could be for a variety of reasons, but uh, I can't see it. But oftentimes underneath, the, uh, the shifter linkage comes off of these transmissions. That's what happened to the last one I had. I have one just like this. And it said the same thing, crank no, or no, has power, will not crank. And the uh, shifter was off, so. I put it back on and it cranked right up. So the ground's a little bit wet for me to be crawling around on, but um, I think the bidding right now is at $400 on this, this one. It looks pretty good on this side, it has some rust on it, but we have parts for this truck. So uh, we're gonna keep this one on our radar and see what it goes for. If we can get this for, I don't know, six, $700 all in, I think it'll be a good deal for us. It has a pretty decent interior and we have parts for it. It's an extended cab, it's four wheel drive. So it's a, it's a possibility. We'll keep an eye on it. Now in the good dependable car market, it's hard to beat a V6 Buick. So we will be looking at this uh, LeSabre, which was brought in for unknown reasons. It is a 2004, it has keys, it runs, and it went into gear. And this should have the, uh, the little V6 in it. If we get lucky, it has a supercharger, which it does not. It has a, it's a 3800 2 Series. And uh, these are, man, these are good engines. They run and run and run and run some more. So this one, how many miles did I say had on it? It had on it 153,000 miles. That's nothing on one of these cars. I mean, these were, these were the luxury cars back in the day. Uh, the radio's gone. That's a bummer. You got some change in there to offset the cost of the car. Cup holders with uh, seeds in them. And yeah, got a few little things. It's been beat on a little bit, but I would say this should sell hopefully under $1,000 and be a good, dependable car. This would definitely definitely make you a, a nice daily driver, for sure. Now this is what I like to call a gamble car. It was brought in as an abandoned vehicle, but it only has 156,000 miles, it has keys, and it says it went into gear. But why was it left to sit? That is a good question. It is really clean on the inside, and it looks like it's kind of been taken care of, but, um, Taurus, Taurus is not, does not have the best reputation, and I don't like 
buying an abandoned vehicle. That is my only issue with this car. But with that low of miles, I don't know. I don't know. This would be a gamble. This would be like a $600 car for me. Let's look under the hood. Well, everything seems to be there and in place and is pretty clean. Doesn't look like it leaks or anything. Huh. We'll keep an eye on this one as well. Now, this does not really fit into our $1,000 car category, but I just wanted to show it just because it's cool. So, what is this? This is a 60... Eight, is it? No, that just says 68 there. They don't they don't know the year. Let's see. Does it say anywhere? I don't know. I'm gonna guess this is a Galaxy 500. Um late 60s, early 70s. That looks late 60s to me. I'm not a Ford guy. I don't know what year this is. Oh my, it's got a big uh, big old 390 in it though. And the hood hinges are off, and it's been sitting for a super long time but i'm sure somebody will probably overpay on this car it's convertible but the top is off and the floorboards look disgusting and i can see through the quarter panel right through the trunk right there so yeah no we are not uh we're not gonna fool with this car that's for sure but somebody's gonna buy it has MVIN number as well. So MVIN means that uh, they couldn't find the VIN number on this, probably because it's not just right there. So they assign a new VIN number to it. That's why it says MVIN right there. So this is gonna have a weird title to it as well, which is also gonna kind of lower the value of the car. But we'll keep an eye on this one too. Now for our under thousand dollar car, next up, I would say this Durango. It was obviously run off of the road, but seeing that it was run off the road, that means it runs. It's a 98, it has 153,000 miles on it. It has keys and the engine runs, but it is pretty awful. Uh, yeah, it is real awful. Um, missing so many parts not taking care of the windshields cracked that's like 250 bucks it's been wrecked we don't know if the suspension is jacked up or not just not taken care of this is a sad example of a thousand dollar car i think it would run it's not really damaged that bad might have to pull the bumper back a little bit but i'm pretty sure this will get you down the road so we'll see what it goes for and again, if you watch my videos, there is always an Equinox. And uh, they go for about the same price, around $1,500. Um, this, one's, this one's in pretty good shape. It's an 05, it has 190,000 miles on it. It is, uh, it's dirty on the inside. Um, but I am pretty sure this is gonna be a runner and a driver. So if for some reason this fell into the $1,000 range, it would be a good deal, but I don't think it is because these always go over a thousand dollars when they're in pretty good shape. We got jumper cables. This one's this one's not bad at all. Just needs a little bit of cleaning up, but they'll do a easy two hundred fifty thousand miles. Okay, um, I guess if you're desperate and really needed a car, this would work for you. What's this? This. The headlights, this battery operated, turn it on and go down the street, I guess. That's, that's weird. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I mean, you'd have to be pretty desperate to drive one of these. I would only want to give about 500 bucks for this thing. Busted out back windshield, plexiglass, beat up all the way around. But according to the tag, it has keys, it runs, and it went into gear. So it probably runs and drives 171,000 miles. It's starting to get a little bit high on a Kia though, but under $1,000 and you need a car, well, I guess this would, uh, it would do for you. Here is another Equinox, but there's no keys for it. And these keys aren't cheap to make. Uh, it was abandoned too. So even though it's a uh, pretty good shape, 
And if it goes for under $500, we'll put some bids on it. But if it goes over $500, we will not bid on this one. I'm willing to take a chance on this one because I like these. Uh, well, if you need a minivan for under $1,000, I would say eh, this one would probably be good. What's it like on the inside? Well, you get stuff. Somebody moving. It has a grill. It even comes with a kitchen sink and a filing cabinet. Huh. This was probably running because somebody was moving. Oh, door doesn't shut very well or at all. Okay, well, there's that. So uh, price is going down on this one. This better be under $1,000 for this thing. So a little bit of work. I think this will run and drive. Okay, now we are definitely going to keep an eye on this one because this is just like our seven or eight uh, Ford that we got for $500. And it has, it's in kilometers for some reason. Uh, 272,000 kilometers, which is, I don't know, a little over 200,000 miles maybe. It has a has an impound sticker like it was left alongside the road, but it says it runs and went into gear. So I don't know. But uh, this is, like I said, this is the same shape as the one we bought and we fixed up. And it's been hit on this side a little bit too. So should we have just bought one that was already ready to go or should we have just uh, fixed one we had i wish i had that headlight that headlight is way better than the one i have so this was hit they replaced that headlight on that one but not that one and didn't buff it out so okay i have like 1100 dollars in the mine let's see how much this one goes for well i do not see much else that is going to be worth looking for the rest of them are either wrecked real bad or going for more than a thousand dollars for sure so let's get back inside and uh, see if we can't find something for a thousand dollars and under all right we are back inside and the auction is just starting and uh the first up on our list will be the 2002 chevy this is our uh, our cheap truck should we buy this or should we not buy this? Probably we should not buy it. We don't need any more projects, but let's see what it goes for. And here she is. This is our 2002 Chevy Silverado. It was the one that was all beat up. Um, it's taken a few hits already. <laughs> now the total with fees is $683, which I really didn't want to give more than five, maybe $600. But uh, people are, people are going to want this truck, uh, apparently. So... Well, and then it just sold super quick. I hate it when that happens. Um, sometimes it just, phew, you get in a couple bids, it counts down, and then it, it sells. So it sold for more than I wanted to give for it. So no big deal. There are plenty more, and uh, all you have to do is wait until the right deal comes along, and you don't overspend on one. All right, next up we have our Buick LeSabre that has... Uh, almost instantly jumped up to $800, $1,028, you know, on, uh, with fees. Now, if it doesn't go any higher than that, we can, we can call that our, uh, $8,000 car. I'm not going to bid on it anymore because it's going to jump the price up too much, but yeah, that's the one it ran and went into gear. It had 154,000 miles on it. It should be a good dependable car. Let's see if it, uh, if it goes for this, uh, $1,028 looks like it's going so boom there it is that's uh that's a good deal i would say perfectly fine and right where we wanted it to be 1028 dollars. so somebody got a fair deal on that car no problems if you want a good reliable dependable car to drive back and forth to work maybe you can make a few dollars on it i'd say you could probably sell that for about 1750 maybe make a few dollars on it or just drive it as a car Okay, we have our gamble car, our um, 2003 Ford Taurus. Um, the pre-bids were $625 on this already. And um, I don't think anybody else is going to bid on it, and they didn't. So <laughs> that was short and sweet. So you can pre-bid on these before the auction starts. So it's almost like a week. So the people bid up to $625. Nobody in the live auction was willing to give more than that on, on the car. So 
that last person that bid on that, they might not even came out and looked at that car. So we, we don't know. So it's a gamble. It could be something good or it could be completely trash, but mm, they could probably make their money back parting it out and sending the rest to the scrapyard, hopefully. All right, we have our Durango. Now, um, this is right at $300 right now. Um, should we hit this one time? Let's, let's bid on it one time. There, we bid on it. We're winning the Durango. <laughs> should we, did we get that one? Okay, well, we won, we won the Durango. Congratulations to us, maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a good thing, but we got it for, uh, what was it, around $500. So hopefully you can't beat that deal. I'll be interested to see what, uh, what that goes for, but man, that is such an awful truck. Can't believe we just bought that. <sighs> but we'll be fine. We, you can't lose money. At that low of a price so let's move on and let's see what else we can get ourselves into okay here is our equinox it's getting ready to go through already it's like a thousand dollars and wow that went that went quick so that was another equinox it says it runs and drives but we don't know anything about that one so i'm guessing that's a good deal um it looked okay the interior was kind of messed up on that one but it should be a decent deal on the equinox i like equinox people keep saying that they're junk but if you can get 250 300 000 miles out of a car how's that junk I, I don't know i don't know well next up we have our incredibly hideous and awful kia rio man this is this is such a bad car but right now the price is only uh 525 dollars and 712 with auction fees and this car is supposed to run hopefully run and drive it runs and goes in the gear that's all we know about it but man that back window is jacked up uh $770 I mean is it worth it how many miles did I say it's 171 yeah 171,000 miles on it would you buy this for $770 I don't know I might if I needed a car and I only had about a thousand dollars to spend I would uh I would buy this just to get back and forth to work. I mean, yeah, <laughs> $770 and there it goes. Definitely. It's an awful car. Let's face it. This is, this is an awful car, but if it runs and drives and you can get down the road, it's the best car there is. So moving on. Well, I'm looking through the list and, uh, it appears that our Ford Galaxy convertible was pulled as well. That is a shame. Sometimes they don't get the paperwork done. That was an MVIN number, so there might have been some problems with that. I can't imagine somebody actually coming back and picking that car up, paying the incredible impound fees that that would accrue. Given probably, what, six to eight weeks it was sitting on that lot. So... Sometimes it's cheaper just to go bid on it at auction than to go pick your car up. <laughs> so that was, that one would have definitely been cheaper to buy it at auction than to pick it up after six or eight weeks. But uh, it's pulled. We'll see if it comes back uh, another week. So we'll move on to the next car. And we have our uh, Chrysler Town & Country. Now it is currently at $550 on the bids. So um, let's see if this goes for underneath $1,000, which it really should, but you, you never know nowadays. It's a runner, it's a driver, it's just sold for $600. And again, I, I keep missing out on, uh, on how much the total price was for, but definitely under $1,000. So six, like $775, I don't know. You can, I'm sure you saw it when it flashed by how much that went for. Um, but yeah, another good deal under a thousand dollar vehicle. So get your thousand dollars, stop making car payments. Why would you want to make car payments when you can get a perfectly good running vehicle to get you back and forth to work until uh, you can save up enough money and pay cash for a better car? 
Now we have our Ford Fusion, our 2006, which is like the one that we bought for only uh, just a hair over $500. And then we had to buy that parts car for like $600. So technically we have $1,100, even though I only allocated $200 off of that parts car because we can scrap it out. So um, would it have been a better ideal just to buy this one for $900? instead of buying two cars and putting uh, one together. Well, it looks like this one is not getting any more hits on it. And it was basically exactly what we have, but already running and it says it goes in a gear. Now we don't know 100% sure, but um, yeah, nobody else bid on that. They bid it up to $750 and uh, with taxes. So, or uh, 900 with taxes. And we have our Equinox. Now that one did not have the keys, right? You know, that one didn't have the keys to it. I like these, but I don't know if I'd want to uh, do it without the keys. Like it's $683 right now. Um, I think that last one went for over $1,000. So you're going to spend a couple hundred dollars on a key and you don't know if it runs. So now it's on $700. You throw in $200 for the keys, you're back at that $1,000. So I think getting one that already has the keys would probably have been a better deal because you're gambling on this one, you know the other one runs. So that's, uh, that's that. And with that, we are out of cars, but don't go anywhere yet because we won that Durango. And I'm gonna go pick that up on the end of this video right here. We're gonna look at it. So we don't always get cars for under $500, but we did on this one. Now this is a under $1,000 video. That car is under $500 with the fees and everything. It's just under 500 bucks. So let's go check that out real quick. All right, we are here and are picking up our sub $500 vehicle, which uh, the more I looked at it, the, the more I'm sad that we bought it. <laughs> uh, I hope this runs. I was walking up to it and I could see from a distance that uh, the exhaust is also hanging off of it for whatever reason. I wonder if they, yeah, they just, uh, they just had that clamp, muffler clamped on there. And I guess when it ran off a road, off the road, it uh, ripped the exhaust out from underneath of it. And it's got rust here and there and pretty much everywhere oh man this is so bad unbelievable why did we buy this uh, i guess just to just to prove that we can apparently and when i opened the hood there's no battery and when they did take the battery they just took the uh took the um the terminal ends off of it and um, yeah, we don't even have any terminal in, so we're just gonna hook our jump pack up straight to there and hopefully we have enough juice. Now, at least it has the V8 in it. I guess it's, um, I don't know, what do they put in these? A the little small 318s fuel injected, but it ought to be pretty decent for what it is, I'm hoping. Man, this thing is such a hoopty. Oh, so bad. Okay, well, let's hook up the battery pack and uh, see if we can get this thing started. Okay, jump pack is hooked up. Uh, we got some power. Let's see if she fires up. Well, it started, it died, but it started. running <laughs> a little, little bit of smoke coming out oh and it died again hope it has gas in it oh great does it not have any gas in it or did it, it says it has half a tank of gas now it doesn't start are you kidding me Come on, it's just running. <laughs> no, it doesn't, are you? 
What is wrong with this thing? Unbelievable. It just died for no reason. Well, it looks like she does not want to start right now. Maybe the uh, gas gauge is off and maybe it doesn't have any gas. I don't have any starting fluid to spray it to find out. So uh, we're going to have to load it on a trailer and get out of here. We can stop by a um, uh, yeah, auto parts store, grab up some starting fluid and see, and maybe put some gas in, on it in the way, on the way to the Street Rat Garage Worldwide Headquarters and see if that helps any, but so far, not happy. Well, we got the Durango all loaded up and uh, it is such, such a disaster. <laughs> Man, let's go grab a few parts for this real quick so we can throw a battery in it. I'm thinking that a lot of the Dodge products they need a certain amount of amperage in order to start and run. Maybe this alternator wasn't working and it drew the, the battery pack down to under like nine volts, I think it is. It needs to keep running. And maybe that's uh, maybe that was our problem, uh, hopefully. If not, I don't know what the problem is, but we know it starts and uh, it runs. It just doesn't do it right now. So let's get this hideous thing up to Street Rat Garage Worldwide Headquarters and check it over a little bit more. All right, we made it up here to the shop and uh, I had a couple clamps. They're not the, the right ones to use. They're for um, like a marine battery, but we got it hooked up. We got a charged battery on here. We have the jump pack on there just to be on the safe side. So hopefully, this is gonna start up. I'm hoping the low voltage problem was the deal with it. So let's cycle the key a couple times. Sounds like the fuel pump's running. Nada. Unbelievable. Nope. Well, that wasn't the issue. Let's spray it. Maybe our fuel pump went bad. If not, we have some electrical demons and that will not be fun. Okay, I'm just going to spray some brake clean down the old throttle body here real quick. And um, let me jump in here and give it a crank. Man, I hope this, uh, hope this fires up because I don't want to fool with the electricals on this. Oh, great. Not good. Not good at all. Well, don't know. Well, that is just strange that it would fire up and run for uh, a minute or two there. Um, maybe this um, computer that's smashed up against this inner fender well has something to do with it. Yeah, that's all loose. Maybe it's not getting a good ground or something like that. Um, it is most likely some sort of I don't know, grounding, computer, wiring issue somewhere that I can't see. So, I don't know. She just will not go right now. And just nothing. We gave it fuel. I gave it a little more brake clean down there and just not doing anything. Well... That is our $500 car, apparently. <laughs> it could be an ignition issue, uh, 98. It doesn't have a chip in this key. Was that a, is that a new cut key for it? I don't know. Did they have, do they have a anti-theft device and a key, a chip key on this? Which doesn't make any sense because it did run. And I don't get anything on the dash saying that there's no key detected, anything like that. So the fuel pump kicks in. I can hear the fuel pump kicking in. There's just nothing. It's just not going. Don't know. Well, could not get it started. I am sad about that. But we know it runs. And what are we going to do with it now? <laughs> I wanted to make a video on buying a $500 car and driving it down the street. So that didn't happen. Now, let's look it over real quick. We have 
a fair set of tires and rims once that has a six lug. I don't think we have anything around here that's a, a six lug that we could use on, use those tires and wheels on, but it's got some nice deep tread, especially on the back tires. So if we had to, could we sell these, just these tires and rims for $500? maybe at least three hundred dollars so let's say we could get three hundred dollars out of those tires and rims is there anything else to sell on this besides you know the engine we can advertise the engine as running it didn't make any noises um so we could probably get another three hundred dollars out of the engine i'm pretty sure we can make this run though it's something simple probably a bad ground somewhere but we have about $600 in parts uh, just for the tires and the engine. So let's say $600 there. Let's take this to the rest of it to the scrap yard, which I probably won't, I'll keep this, but if we take it to the scrap yard, another 300 bucks without the engine and transmission. I didn't see if there was a catalytic converter. So another, what, 150 bucks worth of catalytic converter on one of these. Uh, radiator, condenser, heater core, or all aluminum. I don't know how much aluminum is going for nowadays, but um, we'll make money off of this no matter what. If we have to just throw this away, we made money off of it. So $500, it's no loss. It's just a bummer that it didn't run immediately. Well, it did run immediately. It's a bummer that it didn't keep running <laughs> after we started it. But We'll come back to this. We're gonna make this run. Let's keep this as a project vehicle. Not that we, not that we don't have enough project vehicles. So what, what's one more project vehicle? We'll keep this. We'll say we didn't lose any money off of it, but we did not score uh, an outstanding $500 car that we can just jump into and drive and fix up along the way. And uh, kind of knew that going in. I'm pretty sure there, were, I was pretty sure there was gonna be some problems with it. I just didn't expect it to fail that quickly. So, no big deal. We have a we have a $500 vehicle that we can revisit. We can probably get this running again and drive it down the street. So, we're going to keep this. We're going to be dedicated to making this run and maybe putting some parts on it. Could we put a fender on it? Could we put a hood on it? I pulled the bumper out. I put the winch to it and I just winched it up with the bumper and that pulled it out away from the tire. So and the tires look straight on it. it. It's not as bad as it looks. I mean, it ran off the road into a mud bank somewhere, but the frame appears to be straight and the steering, I think it's gonna go straight down the road. <sighs> well, that is gonna wrap it up for this episode of Street Right Garage. Until next time.